first part of our recording. So we want to make sure that even the hello is, is uh, present and is recorded. So hello, everyone, on another block chat. This block chat is special because we have with us Ardit from Dua. And you've heard about Dua probably prior to the, uh, the partnership that we've uh, started at Block Square with Dua. And maybe you haven't. If you haven't, today we'll cover everything, the partnership. Uh, Ardit will tell us more about Dua. What is Dua doing? And, and it's doing too many interesting stuff as we speak. And uh, what does the future have for it? Why, why is this partnership valuable for, valuable for all Dua users and for all Block Square community for the DAO and, and beyond? Um, Ardit, uh, how are you? And definitely, Dennis, how are you? So it's, it's a block chat with Dennis Petrovic, Makram Hani, and today it's Ardit as well. Uh, Ardit, tell us more, please, about Dua. Hey guys, thank you, thank you very much. Really a pleasure to to be here in this uh, in this block chat. Um, I've been following you. Um, this is a, this is a great opportunity to um, present the partnership uh, with you guys um, and uh, generally uh, talk about Dua and how we can help um, both our communities to achieve uh, their goals. Um, I'll do a short intro of myself. My name is uh, Ardit. Um, I come originally from Albania. Um, my background is, uh, has been in uh, management consulting um, for the banking sector. I've spent a few years also in fintech. And one and a half years ago, I joined Dua um, to lead uh, the payment and crypto project there. Um, what is Dua? Uh, Dua started, um, the vision for Dua was held by, by Valon, our founder and CEO, since 10 years. But it uh, became a reality just two years ago. Uh, we launched our app in 2020 with a vision to connect uh, globally fragmented communities all around the world. Uh, we started, we are actually still in stealth mode. We started with the first... Um, Albanian community since it came for us uh, naturally to start there given also the um, the heritage of our uh, team from uh, Albanian speaking countries and as we speak we have um, reached a point where we can say um, we have catched um, a big chunk of the Albanian market um, we're speaking about one one point three um, million installs and over 500,000 registered users. Um, and just a couple of months ago, we announced um, a really, really interesting project, uh, which is our utility token um, and the blockchain uh, project that will elevate uh, our community and give them the right tools um, to um, have access to financial services um, uh, uh, services that uh, were not so present in this in this community, but I'll talk uh, with you uh, more about this. Happy to be here, and uh, yeah, thank you for uh, this opportunity. Thank you so much, Ardit, for for the introduction of Dua. Um, Dennis, uh, you know we, we've talked about uh, this introduction. Now, Ardit will definitely tell us more about the the recent acquisition that uh, Dua have have done. Um, and we'll talk more about the, the uh, partnership. However, from a Block Square point of view, why this partnership? We've briefly talked about it before. Why this partnership and how does it help our community, our DAO and beyond? Um, <clears throat> well, the first, uh, the first touch point uh, on a potential of establishing a partnership with Dua um, was actually brought to me by, by Dita, uh, who is also assisting as an advisor uh, to the DUA um, and, uh, and is heading our DeFi uh, development team. Um, and when he came to, to me with this kind of um, idea or suggestion, I was basically, I, I was like, why why would we do it right just honestly i was like what what what's in it for us why would they need you know why would they be interested in what we're doing etc right 
But then we started talking about, you know, um, Dua itself. Um, it's yes, it's a dating app, but it's a community of people that come from a certain culture, right? And they usually live abroad and they have a hard time meeting other people from that same culture. Um, and, uh, and then it immediately, you know, uh, made sense uh, just by talking about, about that subject, not even touching real estate. But real estate is something that takes somebody that is living abroad, uh, somebody, you know, people from uh, a community diaspora um, back home, right? Real estate is something that is uh, giving them a footing in their original uh, uh, culture uh, or origins of their culture where they might have some family uh, that they meet maybe every every day, decade, maybe <laughs> once or twice, maybe not even on a yearly basis, right? Um, but it's something that gives them, um, you know, um, that gives them connects uh, them. Connects a, a sense connection, of connection yeah. and origin, right? Um, and, and, and sense of pride as well. And what's what's more to be proud of if you have if you're able to kind of co-develop the country uh, that you it's it's you know your background where you're able to add value to it by making maybe some minor investments in that uh, in the infrastructure there in the real estate there basically everything that's important for for uh, a country that's really solid is, is based on land, right? That's where, where people live. So it, and it gets the diaspora to together. It gets the diaspora together and gives them easier access, even people who are usually so disconnected. It, it, when it allows them this easy access, they will reconnect usually, yeah? Exactly. exactly. That's, that's kind of the, the idea that at least I see here. Um, with this partnership of Dua, being able yeah. to create that meaningful connection um, that comes through um, putting energy into developing something, into renovating a project, into um, you know, bringing a new project there, or, you know, helping a new residential. Pro it depends, really. It's like it can be used in different ways. You've, we've talked um, uh, in, about, uh, you know, community projects as well um uh, for some time and and i think we're gonna discuss a bit more about it right makram in our next in our next uh, block chat but there's many things that can uh, how tokenization of real estate can be used for and on the other side you just need a community that is passionate about and and here i think the passion part is is a, is, is there's definitely a check mark uh there um definitely uh, i mean you touched upon the diaspora topic right um we have seen um uh, a lot of dating apps um we do not consider a dua a dating app um we see it as more of an ecosystem where um diaspora communities from one side and people that live in the origin countries can create relations different uh, kinds of relationship from love which is the uh, dating part but we are also extending uh, the app with two other modes, which are Dua Biz uh, and, and Dua Friends. Um, uh, so adding this business and friendship part to the whole ecosystem. Just to, to mention uh, um, a statistic, um, it is extremely hard to find, um, uh, let's say, an Albanian, two Albanians to match each other on a traditional dating app like Tinder. On Dua, uh, our focus is exactly at that. We just we connect um, the same people from the same background, ethnicity, uh, cultural background, um, and uh, provide them a platform where they can uh, connect, match, uh, communicate with each other, create uh, friendships. And of course, um, with with our recent project, um, connect them to a new whole. Um, infrastructure, which is um, which will help them um, uh, get services, like for example, invest in, in real estate deals, uh, which was not imaginable um, uh, before. Uh, there is a there is considerable data and uh, research uh, studies that show that the diaspora hold an, um, a, a huge amount of, of, of funds. 
um, of uh, stocks, of um, uh, pension funds. And if we find a way to streamline these funds to, uh, to, to um, real estate in their home countries, uh, that means they could con contribute here directly to the development um, of their cities, uh, small towns, and generally to the to the economy. So, so let um, me here really... try to. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Ardit. No, ahead, no, it's, it's fine. I, I my question was just to summarize. So what you're saying and what Dennis is saying is what we're trying to do is we're allowing and again, Dua is an app that currently serves a community. However, you've just done an acquisition that would serve a bigger community and at the same time you're working on um, growing that beyond you're just at the at the start of uh, of the the journey so hopefully you can you can uh, serve many communities and many diasporas now if we want to talk about that for a second what i understand from you today is that what you're saying is that we're connecting people from everywhere in the world with their roots and with people of their community of their ethnicity or or beyond, maybe with time, it will it will be proven that somebody who's Albanian will meet somebody who's Swiss on a, on a, on one of the groups. Now, regardless, what you're saying now is that we want to allow them, or this partnership will hopefully facilitate for them, utilizing the network of uh, Dua and the infrastructure of uh, Blocksquare to access real estate in those vincities localities communities areas or beyond so in other words if you have currently how many members in total do you have Ardit? uh both apps so dua and spotted tote which we acquired um, uh, recently have five million uh, active users over five million active users perfect so five million active users today will have access to real estate using the infrastructure of Blocksquare. And this is a, a great benefit to Blocksquare, yet also a great benefit to, as an add value add to Dua and, and the, 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 the community and the communities that will come afterwards, as well as, does it have any further utility? Uh, is there any ambition to uh, hopefully connect people further or to do something beyond this? Oh yeah, let me, uh, let me go deeper into, into that. Um, so I mentioned before we are uh, we explored when I started we wanted to um, um, bring people together um, uh, the Dua token project so we uh, we have announced um, a few months ago that we are launching our utility token um, why we saw um, we saw some issues. Um, uh, in the communities we we run and we wanted to solve them. One of them uh, was the huge amount of people that are um, unbanked. So there are over 1.4 billion people that um, lack financial basic financial services, uh, do not have a bank account, and therefore um, cannot engage with any financial uh, online financial service. Um, we wanted we started looking at it from a traditional perspective. So uh, we started pouring, um, building an, a new bank, a, a fintech, but given um, the different regulation jurisdictions that you, you need to be concerned of, uh, that was not an option. Um, and we um, uh, looked how could blockchain and um, uh, crypto help us create this solution for our communities. Um, we published our white paper um, three months ago and uh, we propose um, an ecosystem that is made of an in-app um, wallet. So basically uh, every user that uh, creates um, uh, a profile into the apps uh, has the possibility to uh, automatically, so they will be pr uh, prompted to create an in-app wallet. Um, in the moment uh, the user has an in-app wallet, um, he's free to connect uh, and engage with different um, DeFi protocols. Um, we believe a lot in the in, um, user education through uh, gamified elements in the app. So we want to bring that because it can scare a lot of people away when they hear about crypto, in-app wallet, ERC-20, 
um, I think that's that's a, that's a big issue of the industry right now. We want to bring that as easy as possible to them, um, and we have proposed um, a three. Um, tiered ecosystem, which includes a reward system. So basically, every user that uh, will engage with the app daily um, can get rewarded for specific actions uh, in the apps. The second one would be um, a DeFi access through the in-app wallet. Um, and the third one would be a decentralized self-sovereign identity solution. So um, to summarize it, we are, our vision is to build um, a virtual economy for uh, these underserved communities uh, to um, engage more and solve their problems um, uh, in terms of uh, financial inclusion. And one element of that is also getting getting access to to real, to real estate. So um, how that would work is uh, a user uh, creates a profile uh, through the in-app wallet. He then uh, gets the possibility to uh, select in which real estate deals he would want to uh, get in, uh, and that uh, with the user experience as easy and accessible as possible. So what you've done here is you're trying to uh, Elon Musk and his attempt now with Twitter. Probably you've done that or you've attempted that or started attempting that some time ago. At the same time, what I see here is that you're giving people access to everything from getting a partner in life to um, um, getting access uh, financially to services and getting uh, access to real estate. So in other words, you're trying to create a whole ecosystem where people can be uh, self-sustained self within, yeah? This is what you're trying to do. So um, I don't know if you know Balaji. Balaji has a book uh, written that uh, talks about network states. Uh, we are trying to build that network state uh, for these fragmented communities. And we are talking about um, millions of people. There are 300 million migrants today in the world, which is one part of the problem. And then we have uh, all relatives and families that are connected to this, uh, to, to this uh, diaspora communities. So overall, we are trying to achieve this network state within our apps where people uh, not just can connect and socialize with each other but also get access to a new realm of um, financial services perfect uh, uh, dennis i i believe this is huge yeah and and here while ardit was talking i i was thinking of uh, it's not only the access of the five million users and beyond again uh, if they've just started and they have 5 million users, um, imagine the growth in the future, especially when people discover with time that social media is not so social. So they need uh, to connect and create relationships and probably they need networks and communities to be able to do that. And then they can interact with real life assets and beyond doing that. Now, I'm, I'm thinking of what can this mean to our... our um, DAO, what can this mean to um, our community? Can you please define that in simple terms? What would that mean, Dennis, to uh, Block Square's community and DAO, as well as assets and tokenization and, 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 and everything further beyond that? Um, well, I think um, being able to, as a DAO, being able to um, offer the infrastructure to uh, a partner that um, is kind of uh, putting or pulling together five million users, or you know, and then growing from from that uh, from that even beyond. I think it's something that is 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 a great point of validation for us. I mean, we've built our infrastructure exactly for for enabling such interactions, and 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 I think this this will become uh, a very interesting. Um, case study uh, for for other partnerships that might come later on. But if we if we kind of focus on on Dua, uh, I first was looking at it as a dating app, but then talking with Ardit and the team is like you get under to understand that connecting online with your own community or the community that you feel um, uh, more likely and, and uh, you like to to connect because also of language barriers in the end right um and and cultural barriers 
um, it's, it goes beyond a dating app. It, it goes into uh, socializing normally uh, with friends uh, and, 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 and so forth. So uh, it makes a lot of sense that if this app becomes like the, the central piece of communication within uh, a group of people, um, that they are able to achieve more things using that app directly instead of uh, requiring to go to some some other place as well. Um, and and uh, when why wouldn't financial services be be a part of it? Um, and I hope that with with our infrastructure we can facilitate the the part where um, some projects can can be. Uh, can emerge from this from this as a as a route to easily finance um, a project back home uh, for uh, diaspora uh, community, and um, I believe that this interacts or directly intersects with growth of a DAO, which then becomes as well a uh, a DAO where under it you have kind of certain communities that that have their own initiatives, right? Um, and I see that members of, of Dua can become just as well members of our DAO and vice versa, because uh, I'm sure that within our kind of DAO, we have people who are uh, a part of a di diaspora um, and uh, feel the kind of the need of having a social app that can connect them with the people that they feel close to. Uh, Marka Muir, for instance, you're part you, of you've our been community. Marka, you've part been of our community, Dua. Years, right? com. Attempt, sorry. Yeah. yeah, you've been you've been living in Dubai for what 20 years, right? But you're Lebanese, yeah. right? Yeah. Which is okay, yeah. it's not that it's not as far away, but it's still, you know, it's it's a totally different uh, uh it's a country, perfect right? use case. Uh, yeah, so you, you probably have that understanding and your wife is Lebanese as well, right? Yeah, actually 20-ish 20, 20 years ago, 24 years ago, I had a manager uh, whose name was Azmi Kawas. The guy told me the following. We we're chatting about something else at that time and he told me the marriage as an institution is a very difficult to manage and run and sustain institution for you to add complexities similar to cultural differences on it. That's why it's important for people to get along. Uh, people, it's easier actually, not more important. Probably diversity is great. However, it's easier for people to get along and sustain that with people of their own culture um, and language where there's no language barrier, there's no other barriers in play. So. 100%, that's a perfect use case because, um, uh, you know, it's much easier to communicate with someone uh, who, who understands how were you brought up and who understands many things and complexities of your thinking, 100%. So in the end, in the end it comes down to um, what people really need. So there is a huge demand in the recent years for people within one uh, ethnic background to stay connected with each other. And we are uh, solving and tackling directly that, uh, that problem. Um, Actually, when Ardit but, said now, when yeah. Ardit said there's 300 million immigrants, we have 20 million Lebanese immigrants, so we have like 8% of them. I'm not sure if that's a good thing <laughs> or bad thing. But <laughs> you need to target Lebanese community next. <laughs> so, uh, one quick fact. Um, Spot It, the, the app that we acquired uh, recently, has a mm -hmm. huge community in, uh, in uh, Morocco. I mean, it's part of the Arab world, world and we have seen a huge growth there. So uh, just to, to name some, some numbers, um, in one year, we reached there, the app reached there 1 million installs with zero marketing budget. Why? Because Spotted has this um, really interesting um, feature that connects people based on their uh, real location. So when you and me have, for example, um, path cross, uh, cross path somewhere, the app recognizes it and, and matches it, right? 
Um, and uh, we have also a feature which um, every user can produce content there. And in Morocco, it just skyrocketed. Um, one million installs uh, within a few within a few months. So we really see a big potential um, also in the Arab uh, world, in the MENA region, and uh, definitely will come also for the, for the Lebanese. I mean, 20 million. A side question here. That's not <laughs> a side question here. That's not so connected to the subject. Um, so you're currently in many in many uh, uh, countries, probably. Which one is the highest growth countries for you? And is it, uh, are you seeing a trend like the more conservative countries are, the more growth you are achieving or, or no? So uh, for now, um, in terms of revenue, we're talking about uh, the DAH area. So uh, Switzerland, Germany and Austria um, are performing extremely good. Um, we started with the Albanian community and traditionally uh, it was uh, discussed that no dating, no dating apps in Albania, no dating uh, apps in Kosovo because of the tradition, right? People would not uh, connect through this, uh, through this platform, um, uh, but it worked and um, the numbers uh, show it. But uh, in, in terms of revenue, um, the DAH area is performing uh, So really well. is, that, is that Albanians who live uh, in Correct. those countries, because I don't believe, for example, Germany has a big diaspora, uh, does it? No. Uh, so we have only one community right now. We started with the Albanian community, but we are adding further communities next year. Um, our, in our roadmap, we have the plan to um, introduce a feature which is called Stay Local or Go Global. That means um, different communities, we will onboard different communities, and uh, as a user, you will have the chance to either connect within your ethnic uh, community on, or go global and be mixed with the whole um, with the whole user base. And this will change the game um, a lot. Um, and that's what we are aiming for for, for next, uh, next Q1. Perfect. And there are certain countries that are known for immigration, like Canada, for example, or the US. Do you have presence in any of those markets or are you targeting to have presence on those markets? Or are you targeting origination markets mainly? So similar to the Albanian market or probably the Lebanese market after that or the Moroccan market where there is where origination of immigration takes place rather than the end destination. When we identify which country we want to, um, we want to expand to, we have both uh, sides of the deal. So on one part, if you want to target, let's say, um, Swiss uh, people, we go and target Switzerland, but also identify in which countries do uh, Swiss live the most, let's, let's say Germany or Italy or England. So these are the two poles Perfect. of the equation. Perfect. So you've mentioned a whole ecosystem. And yeah. if I want to describe it very simply, it starts by people uh, gathering and communicating and connecting. Um, and Again, it may be dating and beyond dating. So it, it, it doesn't have to be purely dating. It may be connecting with the community because I believe that, um, as, as Dennis said, they may want to connect for their country or with their uh, country and roots. But then it takes it beyond. So if we want to put like a roadmap, a funnel that uh, this goes through, after people connect, you're allowing them to transact now let's talk about transacting and how and then you're allowing them also access to similar to real estate with block square you're allowing them access to purchase and invest uh, using again uh, using a very simple method which allows them to do it online digitized wherever they are in the world now transact let's talk about the transact part what will they transact and how can they transact and are you also planning or do you have in the thinking a um, very simple, easy, uh, smooth, soft going um, money transfer uh, or uh, um, money movement uh, solution that you embed within, within that, that, uh, that cycle? The short answer is yes. So uh, let me take it a uh, a bit uh, further, um, when we talk about fragmented communities, um, we talk about remittances. We talk about uh, money transfer. 
And um, often um, people that live in diaspora uh, send remittances to, to their relatives and families back home. But generally, they use traditional channels. Traditional channels could be from banks to money transfer operators. And the hugest pain here is um, the fees they charge. Sometimes they pay up to 10%. Or in Africa, in Africa you can go up to 20%. So um, what are we aiming here is to bring this experience within the app, uh, with an in-app wallet, embedded wallet, that would serve um, as, uh, let's say, as a bank account and uh, can be used from these communities to move money from A to B. Um, of course, with on and off ramps so that we give uh, the people the chance to convert um, uh, the stable coins that they will be sending to, to each other. Um, um, the token, our token, is not a good use case for, for remittances because it's a utility token. Um, uh, so our plan is to integrate the uh, um, dollar pact and euro pact stable coin within this ecosystem and uh, help them um, transmit money freely, P2P, uh, from, from A to B. And this may save them in the future also uh, ex currency exchange rate costs whenever... Whenever the money they send, let's say they send it in a uh, stable coin, which is pegged to the dollar or the euro, and that stable coin is usable in its own format on the other side to buy goods and to spend and to consume, then maybe you don't need to go back into dollars or euros to spend and consume. And that may be um, a good also saving mechanism whenever it comes to currency exchange, isn't it? Yes, that would be the ultimate uh, goal, actually. To have um, an on-chain economy that is supported by people, by businesses, and where cryptocurrencies are used and, and uh, accepted um, in everyday life. But that, that takes time. I mean, we are still early stage. We need to give uh, people the options, uh, both alternatives. Uh, You've closed your Series A, well. didn't you, Adit? Yes, that's correct. Um, we closed the Series A um, uh, for 4 million USD um, from international investors, Swiss and international investors, that will help us expand um, more into the DAC area, but also other regions in, in Europe. Perfect. Dennis, hmm. is there any other partnerships? Uh, it seems that this is a super interesting partnership. And again, Every single time we talk Dua, the first thing that came to mind is how, why, and what. So it's a super interesting partnership that has potential to uh, um, grow and help us reach way beyond where we are. At the same time, it may get people connected while buying homes and people who are being connected to be able to buy homes. Is there any other partnerships that are uh, as interesting from a business standpoint you see uh, with Doha and uh, with the with the with Doha going forward, is there any other uh, integrations that you see uh, are possible? Well, there's obviously you know a lot of things that we can do with Doha. I think the experience that we have as a company in developing uh, um, uh, Web three products as well, um, not just the use I would say of of our infrastructure directly. Uh, but maybe uh, also products that we built in the past or that we're building right now uh, can come in handy. I believe that uh, this partnership can also offer us an ability to test certain features before they are released on a large enough uh, number of users. So we can have um, um, in this collaboration certain uh, certain things that that uh, that we can roll out uh, only for Dua uh, uh, in front, uh, certain certain functionalities that they might require in uh, in the future. Um, uh, but directly, I see this as a, as a, as a spark for uh, for partnerships that will come uh, directly to us as well, because I see Dua as um, is a source of of users for specific marketplaces. So we're talking about um, the the uh, Albanian diaspora, right? Okay. So um, 
are there uh, marketplace operators in Albania that can can utilize our tech on the other side um, and structure um, certain deals for the user base of Dua, right? And I think that the, the Dua's power here is uh, to be able to also create um, kind of a framework of due diligence for those partners saying, you know what, we're going to work with you guys if you follow this, these steps, because we want to make sure that our users are safely making safe, educated investments um, through the offers that you are producing here uh, in Albania, right? So um, we see that this type of relationship will happen and with every diaspora community that uh, Dua is opening up, this opens up for us a potential to go to a certain market and say, you know what, now Dua is really focusing on the Italian diaspora uh, in the US, for instance. And uh, we want to have marketplaces uh, based in Italy um, that offer certain investment opportunities. Why not? So I'm, I'm just thinking and my bit brainstorming out loud, but I see that there's a lot of potential here um, through this so uh, collaboration. This wasn't now? that straightforward maybe at the beginning, but it's making more and more sense as we as we talk right about it. So is it fair enough now to say if you are in property in Albania, there is a window of 1.2 million downloads, 500,000 users. Did I get the numbers right, uh, Ardit? 100%. In, in Albania, ready to look at real estate. So if you are in real estate and you want to make a difference and you want to allow everyone access to get rooted and grounded, um, regardless of where do they live now in the world and how long have it been, how many generations have they uh, have they uh, grown outside their uh, main country or their original country because they may have other passports currently and other citizenships as well. It's your opportunity. There is an opportunity here. And usually when you come to uh, use Block Square infrastructure and launch a marketplace and open a market, you launch a marketplace, you have a supply, but you always need demand. And demand is a big challenge. You go and spend so much money and time and effort to get demand. Here, demand is there. So demand is, is there. You just need to cater to that demand and to cater to the, the users in a way that adds value to them because the whole idea is value adding. The most I love about um, when, when a team, a group of people sit together and create a, a utility uh, app similar to what Doha is today and think about the growth and they really uh, impact markets and still at an infancy level because at the same time it's a series A so Doha is not a, a company that has gone all the route it's just at the start of the journey they do an acquisition similar to the one that they've done which grows their reach even more and they see a strategic benefit in that. So if you're in Morocco as well and you have that opportunity, jump on and probably many other countries. We should have Julia. We should pass those countries on to Julia and probably <laughs> Julia will, will, will uh, go and, and tap into every one of those. Isn't it, Dennis? Yeah, well, Julia is, uh, she's German, for instance. She lives in Australia, lives in Australia. For, for, yeah. for, for quite some time, right? Um, yeah. And... Um, by the way, Julia just told me uh, that she's going to spend a couple of months in, in Germany, in Europe uh, uh, next year. So, um, yeah. October 1st? <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be earlier than that. <laughs> I think it's like it's something like April uh, or so. Um, but, yeah, um, I think it's when you start thinking of, of the potential of, of Dua, I, I really think it's, it's a great approach to um, putting people together. Um, and, um, and I think it's important to then direct people into, into good causes. Not, not in, I'm not saying, you know, you need to donate money, but I'm saying, you know, direct energy, that energy money is in a way energy, right? You produce it through whatever business you do. Um, and you want to put it to something that earns you additional money, that makes you more money, 
but at the same time if it also serves another person if uh, another uh, another uh, uh purpose it makes even more sense so you know you you achieve two things at, at once and why wouldn't you invest in real estate uh in your home in your home country um support the growth of the community there um and yeah uh, and and at the same time uh make make good investments uh and, and even if it's not your home country yeah because for example albania i believe is a young real estate market yeah there is so many opportunities that live there and and probably people from everywhere in the world, pioneer investors, look at that and say, do I want to really invest in a market that's saturated, that have been growing for the last 30 years by ridiculous, uh, <laughs> ridiculous uh, uh, numbers every year? And the, the money print, the quantitative easing that have been thrown on it have made bubbles grow even beyond they should way mm. way beyond they should or shall i go to a frontier market a market that has just started um if it grows it grows super fast it has a young you have a young community i believe in albania yeah you have a young uh, uh society uh, in general and yes yeah, average and this... average 30 26 to, to 30 years old perfect so but in the end the in future. the end in the end it's in the end, it's about uh, having access to to an asset deal to to real estate which wasn't accessible uh, before. So we are talking about, uh, let's say, um, Albania. But let's focus on Albania. We will expand. Um, we start in Albania, but let's take this as a use case. It's a young country, right? It was a communist country 30 years ago, um, and now young people are having a hard time. Um, buying their their uh, property or getting their first homes and these kind of tools g give them the opportunity to have uh, their first fractionalized real estate which um, uh, uh, is not common and unheard so this is this is a chance to really bring um, millions of young people into into real estate at uh, uh, an industry which is a trillion um, uh, hundred trillion um, dollars industry um, global so um, I think made, making that possible to, to everyone, um, it's a win-win for, as you mentioned before, for the supply side, but also for the demand um, side. So, uh, Adit, is there anything else you would like to say to our community and to uh, Dua's community, every user and, and business partners, everyone who is listening to us today? Of course, um, thank you in the beginning for uh, for having me here. It was uh, really interesting talking to you. Um, I've been following the Vlogsquare community from the social channels, so Discord and Telegram. You guys are doing amazing stuff. Um, uh, keep that energy high also in these market conditions. Um, it's about the vision in the end. And we are really happy about this partnership. Um, we have uh, launched uh, our fundraising. For, for the utility token. Everyone that is interested to, to ask questions or interact with our community um, will post uh, our uh, social media channels. Uh, you can visit us on dua.com. And other than that, I'll be present in every social media channel. So for every question, um, you can directly talk uh, with me. Dennis? Perfect. Um, well, um, I'm as I as I said when we announced the partnership, I'm really excited about uh, the collaboration. I'm excited when when we will have. As I, I'm a hands-on person, so I, I will love to see things actually happen, um, and not just be talked about it. And, and be meeting the team at, uh, at Dua, I know that that's exactly what the, the route is. It's not um, it's not just a discussion uh, of um, of if but when um and um and, and really really looking forward to to making that connection because it at the core of of block square vision it's that real estate is local and investors in tokenized real estate will come from the local community but in this case the local community can actually live my hundreds of miles at, across the globe and and i think it's beautiful <laughs> making so, global local yeah yes exactly <laughs> that's the new slogan 
making global <laughs> local so that your coming hundred dollars goes into a property rather than a gadget. This is what we're pre presenting you with. Yes, it's your coming hundred dollars. It used to go into a gadget, which you use for a few weeks or a month. You lose, you forget, you throw, you break. It deteriorates. Today, it can reproduce. Think of it. Ardit, we're very interested in, uh, interested to, to have you. And, and um, it, it has been a great chat. Um, very simple, direct to the point. And at the same time, I believe you've... Um, You've told us about a cycle which is inspiring, and let's hope that it can be achieved very soon. Thank you so much for being part of uh, our block chat today. Um, thank you to Doha for being uh, uh, the partner you uh, you are now and you will be in the future. And we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll hopefully work together to grow this partnership and the possibilities way beyond exactly to what uh, Dennis have mentioned, what you've mentioned, and. Uh, and we see where can we uh, add value to our community and your users, subscribers, and community as well. Um, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Doha. Thank, thank you for everyone who watching us, who's watching us today. Regardless if you are a Doha subscriber or user or not, you need to subscribe or try it, test it out. Um, and if you are a member of uh, and a subscriber in Doha, feel free to join us also at blocksquare.com. Sorry, blocksquare.com. That's new, huh? Uh, so, yeah, it's <laughs> maybe it's going to be that you, should, you, should, you should buy the domain <laughs> an alternative website so blocksquare.io feel free to join us join our community join uh, uh, the energy that we are here with again it's no hype it's fundamentals that we're working on have a good morning good evening good night wherever you are ciao <laughs>